Hello to my wonderful art students. I am so grateful to have you back in the studio with me. I miss having you in the classroom, but I'm so grateful that we are able to continue doing art together online. I have come up with six new lessons for April and decided to focus this month on local homegrown San Antonio artists. So we are going to have a really good time doing this lesson together. Before we begin, I want you to remember that this is a time to express yourself. This is your art, it's your creativity, and we don't have anybody else to compare to. I just want you to have a good time and use whatever supplies that you do have at home and just enjoy the process of making art. The artist that we will be focusing on for kindergarten is named Luis Vega Trevino. He is a homegrown San Antonio artist. He went to five years of Catholic school for his elementary school. Then he moved to Sol Ross Middle School, and then he graduated from Holmes High School. He also attended San Antonio College and spent his entire artist career in our city. His painting has evolved into a style that is instantly recognizable and uniquely its own. His paintings are inspired by the colors of Mark Ruthko and Jules Olitsky, and the geometric and optical abstraction of Jean Davis and Richard Anoskowitz. It is between these two areas of color and shapes that Trevino has found his own signature color and style. I think you guys will really like it with all of the shapes and the patterns that you're learning in kindergarten. So I thought it would be a lot of fun for you. Trevino likes to balance cool and warm colors and then blur some lines in between them. And he likes to merge those colors together very subtly. He has been daring in his approach to color, breaking new ground in the history of colorists. He has a tradition that is rapidly establishing a secure and intriguing position as an artist. Since the early 1990s, Trevino has been drawing obsessively on a daily basis. At the age of 19, he abandoned his studies of art and architecture at San Antonio College and he became a designer at an architecture firm and he worked there until 2000 designing for big projects. While he was there, he even designed a carpet pattern for the San Antonio Convention Center and for Trinity Baptist Church. He became a serious artist drawing in about 1995 when he found himself impulsively putting pen and ink on napkins while he was at a local restaurant. He was very excited by the possibilities. He started buying cocktail napkins in bulk and then he would work early in the morning or late at night designing them. He uses pen and black ink to embellish a white napkin with a spontaneously drawn pattern. To this day, he carries around a cigar box that's filled with blank and hand patterned napkins. And then whenever the mood hits, he completes the drawings. In 1998, Trevino started drawing on post-it notes. While some of the post-it drawings are hand colored in the same fashion as the napkins were, others are scanned, painted digitally, and then printed on paper. The compositions range from simple to complex, and most are very energetic and animated. Over the years, Trevino has exhibited his napkin drawings in large grid formations, where each drawing functions as a section of a modular composition and endless possibilities exist for the overall arrangements. In 2009, he was invited by the Public Art Division of San Antonio's Department of Creative and Cultural Development to use imagery from his napkin drawings as the basis for a site-specific installation in Main Plaza, San Antonio. From 2009 to 2011, kiosks that are in Main Plaza were wrapped on all four sides with Trevino's compositions. 
the artist made the leap from micro to macro, which means from little to big, with his art by scanning in the napkins and then digitally enlarging them to scale. And then they were printed on vinyl and mounted on the kiosks on their aluminum exteriors. So you can see on the left, there's a very little small napkins and one of those he would take, scan it, and then enlarge it and it would get wrapped on a building kiosk. Around 2001, while experimenting with color on his computer, he found that stretching an image in Photoshop produces patterns of vertical lines in different colors that reminded him of the poured paint canvases of Morris Luis and the stripe paintings of Jean Davis. Both artists pioneered in the 1960s this kind of color field abstraction. So inspired by art history and interested in working with units of color, Trevino adopted a process of painting vertical stripes from top to bottom on a canvas in very slow, steady movements. With the stripes positioned randomly, in the earliest examples, he limited his palette to only three colors, which he varied by mixing in black or white, which you guys have learned about is adding tint or shade to one color and it changes the color of it. In Trevino's paintings, the colors physically overlap. So one color merges with the next to create a glistening luminosity. For much of the past decade, Trevino has followed the lead of another pioneer artist from the 1960s, Saul LeWitt. Trevino developed a system for making art in which, in his case, involves painting stripes using a specified number of colors to move beyond the confines of the traditional rectangular canvas. He decided to start painting on triangular shaped canvases as well as other shapes. And then he would join those modules together to make even grander shapes. So it's really exciting to see the circular or the trapezoidal or the zigzagging structures that he's made. The visual result is that each painting can be put against one another to create colorfully vibrant rhythms that move in different directions. These are also some pictures I wanted to add in for you guys to see of buildings he's done. He's done a lot of sidewalk chalk art. He has a really great imagination. Um, he's just got a lot of fun stuff going on down on the river walk and all around town. And this is another one that he did outside on the floor of a building. Now don't get out your paint and paint your floor without your parents permission though. If you want to look at other art pieces by Luis Vega Trevino, you can continue on his Instagram account or you can look at his website, which is Luis, L-O-U-I-S, Vega Trevino.com. He has a lot of fun, vibrant, colorful art that you can use as inspiration for your own art. We're going to use this piece for inspiration for our art that we're working on today. This piece is called Sleeping Beauty. I need you to get together some art supplies that you have around your home and then we will get to work on our art together. I am going to use oil pastels. You could also use crayons or chalk. You could use chalk pastels or sidewalk chalk. Either one of those would be fine. You can also grab some painter's tape that we can use to divide our sections of triangles. Um, regular tape doesn't work very well, but if you have painter's tape, then that would be a good thing to use. If you don't have it, then just grab a ruler and we'll make some very soft lines with pencil that you can make all of your triangles and get them separated. So remember that the cool part about having our art class this way is that you can pause the video and go back and catch up or just wait for a minute and go have a snack if you want to, and then come back to finish your art. Once you've completed your beautiful masterpiece, I want you to sign it in the bottom right corner with your name and use a lot of flourish to just really have a great time. You've worked hard at doing this piece of art and I want for you to have your signature bright and fun. So um, another thing I want you to do when you finished is to like this video and I want you to post your art online so that we can all encourage you and tell you what a great job you did. When you post it on Instagram or on Facebook, you will use the hashtag saddleupmavs 
or Rooted Oak Meadow, hashtag Rooted Oak Meadow, so that we can see your work. And my hope is that while we're making art together, even though we can't be in the classroom together right now, that we will be able to encourage one another online. So I'm so glad to have you here today and I cannot wait to see what you do with your art and please make sure to post it online so that we can all encourage you and comment on each other and give each other a bunch of kudos. I'm so excited to see what your masterpieces look like. Okay, so now we are going to move on to our actual art lesson and you can go ahead and bring your supplies together right now so that we can do this amazing piece of abstract, colorful, vibrant art by Louis Vega Trevino. I'm going to use oil pastels and some frog tape. You can use washi tape, freezer tape, painter's tape, frog tape, something that's not very sticky for this assignment. And I have a paper towel here to keep my oil pastels nice and clean. And that's really all you need. If you don't have any oil pastels, use anything else you can. If you have colored pencils, if you have um, markers you can blend together, colored pencils, crayons, oil pastels, chalk, even if all you have is sidewalk chalk, you can use that. Use anything that you can to be able to do this assignment. So the first thing that we're going to do is make our triangles, just like he did. This is a piece I did before to give it a try. And I don't like how white the tape is, but it's what I have. So we're gonna take our tape and we're just gonna peel sections of our tape Make sure you have very clean hands and very clean paper. And then I'm gonna start taping off triangle sections. So I'm gonna do big ones, and then I can come in and do smaller ones. Just let that tape go right off the edge. You wanna have a tape that isn't going to tear your paper. So there's gonna be another triangle right here. Triangle right here. You want to have a bunch of triangles. If you don't have tape, you can use a ruler and just draw out your triangle lines. That would be the easiest thing to do. Not a problem. These will be some fun shaped triangles here. So once you get all of your tape down, then we will move into, I'm gonna work with oil pastels. Cannot wait to see your art and what you guys decide to work with. And I hope you've really enjoyed learning from Louis Vega Trevino. He is an amazing San Antonio artist. And I'm so glad that we have, I have found some really awesome things during this pandemic. And writing new lessons for you guys that we can incorporate into our school year, I think is pretty awesome. So... I might could have made that one really long triangle. This is why you want to use painter's tape or some kind of really gentle tape so that if you need to peel it back up and move it again, you can. This one almost worked out. We need to angle it just a little bit more. But I end up with one really super long, cool triangle over here. Okay, so once remember when you're doing your art with me on video, you can pause it at any time that you need to. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine triangles. So now we're gonna move into oil pastels, or if you have crayons, whatever it is that you want to use for your art. If you'll notice in his art example that we have a lot of darker 
around the outer edge, and then it moves into cooler colors, which if you remember our tables in the classroom, they go from purple, blue to green. And then on the front row are the warm colors of red, orange, and yellow. So you can see just these little pops of warm colors that he has brought in. Otherwise, everything is cool or earth tone on the way outside. So I think it's super fun that we can recreate this art ourselves. So I'm going to start, if you are working with oil pastels specifically or chalk, make sure to remember that if you're left-handed, you want to start in the upper right-hand corner and work your way across your paper down to the bottom left. If you're right-handed, start in the upper left-hand corner and work your way all the way down to the bottom right. I'm also going to grab a ruler to use because I think it will really help to get my lines in. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with brown and just fill in this brown section here. Fill it in really nice. Since I'm using oil pastels, I'm gonna be careful to keep myself some clean fingers so that later on when I'm peeling the tape and I need to touch in the white area, I will not mess up the white space getting strips and dots of oil pastels in there. So I'm going to have this one be brown and then I will move into what he has done is he has mixed in some black for shading and some white for tinting and it brings on an entirely vast array of colors in your art. So get that colored in really well, just like when we work in the classroom, all of you have worked with oil pastels before. So remember that when we work with oil pastels, we want to shade everything in so we don't see any white showing through and we don't have a bunch of streaky, streaky lines. So you might have a hard time avoiding that with this kind of paper that I'm using. I did find a piece of, um, not quite cardstock, but a little bit thicker than paper. To use. So then I'm going to take my white and my black, make sure that they're clean, and then I'm going to use a ruler to come down and make my lines on my, on my art so I have some straight edges. Like that. And then I could come in with white and add some additional colors to lighten it up some. So when the white mixes with the brown and then the white mixes with the black and brown, it'll give you some really cool variations of color. I'm going to kind of freehand this a little bit. And you want to be sure when you use a ruler that you do clean it between each stage so that you do not end up spreading this color on, say you're doing a pink or a blue triangle, you don't want to have black and brown start to come into it. So I'm sharing this oil pastel and blending really good so I get some super cool lines. And I'm going to come back in with some black again until it looks like I think I want it to look. I might make this one a little bit thicker. One thicker black line filled in in this section. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to my next one. So here I'm gonna stick with some, maybe a deeper purple. You want to make sure you're right up against the edge of the tape so that when we peel it later, you'll have a nice crisp edge like I did on that one. Remember to work from one end to the other so that you're not running your hand through your art and smearing it. And if you want to make more triangles than I made, that's fine. I just am doing less bigger ones for less triangles and bigger triangles just for the sake of time and doing all of this coloring for you guys on a video. I'm 
Okay, so then with that, I may come in with some deeper browns and blacks just because on the outside, I'm trying to do earthier tones. And then I'll put some brown mixed in with that to join those together. So once you have kind of smeared everything together so it's like blended lines of art, then you can move to the next one. And just keep on working your way through. And add in a little bit of white for some tinting. Then I'll move on to my next one. I'll do a little bit of a brown with some blues this time. Always make sure to clean up on a paper towel before you move to your next one, especially if you're using oil pastels. This would look fantastic with chalk. If you don't have white paper, you could do chalk on black paper. Just get really creative with your art and what you're doing. So I'm gonna add some blue in here. Then come and bring the white. I almost couldn't find it because it had purple all over it. So I'll make some white and blend all of this in. All right, that looks kind of cool. So now I'm gonna move up here to this triangle and I think I'm gonna add that as a blue one. So we get some colors coming in here now instead of those earthy tones. Make sure to get up to the edges so when you peel the tape, you have a real clean edge. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my ruler again, maybe swipe off some of those darker colors that I had on there and clean up my blue. I'm gonna clean up my white before I use it. And I'm kind of getting low on my edge of my white, so I'm gonna peel some paper off. Clean that up. And then come in here and start in with my tinting and shading. You can do thin lines or thicker lines. You might make that a thicker section. And then a thin line. You can even bring in a little bit of black if you want to, and then go over it with some white just to get you kind of a grayish color coming and mixing in with your blue. Looks so neat. And I love that it looks so messy on here, but once we peel it up, it'll look really clean and crisp. And I love the way these mix together turn into a light blue-gray. Oil pastels are very similar to painting. I think this box was like $2.29 that I bought at Azel Art Supply last summer so that Eli and I could do some work together in the art studio. Okay, so now in here, I want to have some warmer colors, so I'm gonna make, see how he has red and yellow and orange coming in and some pink. So I'm gonna make this one my pop of color that's nice and warm right here. I didn't clean that off very well and it has some black on it. Go right up against the edge of the tape. 
And if you can't keep up with me, remember that's okay. You can always hit pause. And keep on going. Pick back up with me when you're ready. Okay, so red, and then I'm gonna do some blacks. So let's do a black line, a black line. Up here, a thicker black line. And I'll have them get a little further apart as we go down this direction. And I'm gonna clean off my white again before I use it because I don't want to have it get blue into my reds and blacks. So this I'm gonna mix and bring it in and get a little gray going as I smear it down. And then I'll leave that one solid line there and come and color that in. I think that looks kind of cool. I can use a little bit more red right here to accentuate that red. Then I'll move into my next square. So what do we want to do this one? I think I'll do that one yellow so it's a nice bright pop of color in the warm region. So I'm going to color this one yellow, a nice bright yellow. Make sure again that you go right up to the edge of your tape so that you will, when you peel it, you can go color on the tape. It's completely fine whether you're using oil pastels or crayons or, sorry, every time I color too hard, the camera starts jiggling above my head. That's what distance learning and making things work out has turned into a very jiggly art table. Peel some more of my paper back. Okay, so I've got my yellow in and I'm gonna get a lime green and a dark green and make sure that they're clean. I think baby wipes also work really well to clean off the yuck off of oil pastels. Okay, so I'm going to do, I think I might go in this direction. You always want to make sure you stay in line with one of the edges of your triangle. So I'm going to come this way just to change up my direction. Put in those lime green stripes and I'll add in a little bit of a darker green right up against that edge. Uh oh, I got some red in there. And try to blend that in and get the green to overtake it and probably turn brown since they're complementary colors, but Okay, do some more stripes on the way down Add in a lighter one there And down here and then I'm going to clean up my white again so I can use it on the green without sharing a bunch of black and red that we just used come in here with white you can do some really fun blending as I pull it down it operates a lot like paint oops there goes some black in it again we don't want black in it okay and then I'm going to come up here and get a pretty solid line of white up here at the top And I'm going to blend this a little bit more with some yellow. Okay, I like that one. So I have three more to go. I'm going to use an orange for my last warm. So like our tables in the classroom, we have red, yellow, and orange. Here I'm going to have red, yellow, and orange for my warm. My tape didn't quite extend all the way there, so it made a funny edge for that. Okay, so I'm gonna get everything colored in. Okay. 
cannot wait to see your art. So when you're finished and you, we'll go over this again at the end, but when you are finished, make sure that you post it on Facebook or Instagram. If you don't have that, email it to your teacher to have them share it with Miss Johnson or Miss Campos and they can post it online for you on your behalf. But we want to see your art and we want to get to praise your art and tell you what a great artist that you are with all of your triangles. Okay, so then I'm gonna come in with some yellow and make some yellow lines in here. I might bring some brown into that also. Kind of looks like a candy corn. I like candy corns. So just keep on coloring all the way down. Hit pause if you need to. I'm going to grab some white. Uh-oh, I just broke my white. So come in here and add in some white. You can blend into that orange and into that brown just to make a sleeker, really neat looking design over here. And I think I want to have this be much more white down here. So I have two more to go. I'm going to move back into the cooler colors and into earth tones. So since I have green in this yellow, it's kind of a transition um, into my cooler area with green and blue. So I'll do purple as my, um, because green, blue, and purple are going to be our cool colors. So. I think those will look good to one next to one another. And yellow and purple are complementary colors. They're across from one another on the color wheel. Alrighty, there we go. And with that purple, I will add in some green. and some blue just to give it a lot of fun transition and I'll go over it add in a little bit of white and a little bit of black so I'm going to add some a black line in right there and then pretty much the rest of it I think I want to do white but I am going to clean it up again don't want to have orange end up in this so here I will start blending to add in that color dimension. And back to some purple to smooth that out right there. Okay, and my very last one, I think I need to go back to a darker. I might actually use some black. I'm gonna light shade that. Just very lightly. So when I blend it with some other colors, they'll show up really good. So I'll take my brown. Come like this. With some brown. Always stay, no matter which direction you go with your lines, you want them to blend really easily with one another and be all in the correct direction. So make it even with one side of the triangle, whichever one you pick. That yellow is having a hard time going over the black, but we'll get it. Now 
Blend that in with that yellow. I add a little bit of fun red into this section right here. Make sure to go all the way up to the edge of the tape so everything is colored in. And this is going to be my last one. Add in some white up here, blending that into kind of a cool gray. With a hint of brown again. So you can really, um, that's what I love about the oil pastels, all the blending that you can do. Okay, so I'm going to shove those aside. Then we'll do our tape peel. I'm going to try to get a lot of these little flecks of oil pastel off of here before I move into the tape peel, just so I don't accidentally get them in the areas that I want to hold on to the white. Be real careful with that though, so it doesn't mess up your colors. Kind of just sweep it across like a broom. See how many pieces of oil pastel Okay, so then I'm going to start peeling and I'm going to be very careful not to touch my dirty finger in any area that had white. So I need to make sure I have a clean finger, that that's my safe finger to touch in a white area. And just peel back your tape, set it aside in a pile. So here I will come and put my safe finger into the white space and peel that back. Then I'll come up here and peel back and put my safe finger in the white space. Isn't this looking so cool? I've seen some things like this actually, um, some art that was posted by friends and their kids that they have done this with tape out on their sidewalk or in the street or on their fences. That they've put tape up and then used sidewalk chalk in a very similar kind of art piece. So when I saw this by, oops, I got a dirty finger in the white spot. So when I saw this piece of art, by Louis Vega Trevino. I thought, well, this is something I think the kids will love because so many kids have enjoyed doing that chalk. Uh-oh. That's why you want to be really careful with tape. I just peeled my white paint, my white oil pastel up. So I'm going to have to fix that and just very gently try to tear it. Okay. Come at it from this other angle. I got to go in too fast when I was talking. Tear that off and then I can just very gently with my orange fill that in right there. And very gently with this black fill that in right there. No big deal. Life is not perfect. And art is never perfect. So we can come in and fix our mistakes. Just like in our lives, when we make mistakes, we can always go back and fix them. Nothing is devastating. Okay, so here is my last one that I'm peeling away and I'm tearing the paper again. So you guys are gonna have to go real slow. I'm going too fast because I'm concerned about how long that I have had you on this video and I'm trying to finish up quickly. All right, there we go. I got it off and then I'll just tear that little piece of paper right there. And it can, didn't mess with any color this time, so that's good. Okay, so I have my final piece that I have completed, and I cannot wait to see yours. I want you to sign yours. I'm going to grab a pencil right here, and I want you to sign your name with lots of fun flourish. I'm going to do mine. And I'm going to date it for 2020. 
and we have our work of art. I cannot wait to see yours. If you guys will go and post yours online, I cannot wait to see it and we can all compliment on your work and give you thumbs up. Make sure to post on Instagram or Facebook with the hashtag Saddle Up Maps or Rooted Oak Meadow and we will all stay connected, complimenting each other's work and lifting one another up. I miss you guys. Go make lots of art. <laughs>